Hi everyone and welcome to the final day of the Blockchain Community Day conference. So today we are going to talk about uh, NFT, uh, about community and marketing aspects and not only since we also have some AI topics and uh, today we are starting with our good friend of the community and uh, Ward is speaking second year in a row. Uh, Ward is uh, my colleague Ati Pam, who is a managing principal and a business consulting. Uh, and today we are going to talk about the evolution from click to buy to experience to buy. So hi, Ward, how are you? Yeah, doing good, Alik. Thank you. Good to see you again. Yeah, thank you for being with us. And uh, now I think I will try to bring your presentation without further ado. And after that, we will be good to go. Good to start. Let me share my screen. If you can confirm that you can see it, we can start. Just a second. Perfect. Yeah, so please, the stage is yours. Good luck. Okay. Hi, everyone. Happy Friday. I hope the weather, um, wherever you are in the world, um, is as nice as it is in Amsterdam uh, this week already. Um, couldn't have been a better week to discuss the topic of today, how we evolve from click to buy to experience to buy. So let me take you on a, a journey that I'm uh, involved in currently. It's a fun journey. So let me uh, lift the hood for you guys. Just a, a short introduction on uh, where, well, at least I'm coming from. And I think the retail industry is coming from and heading towards. Um, for me, the entire Web3 and blockchain journey so far is a bit of a what they call in German an aha erlebnis. So don't confuse German with the Dutch language. But for me, it's a it feels a bit like hey, I'm going back to the days that e-commerce was introduced, where I have had many conversations and meetings with people, um, where they actually um, inform me, man, don't talk e-commerce. Nothing for my business. It's, will make no impact, it will not move the needle for my revenue. Um, and then I think if you look at the digital retail revolution, obviously retail is the shops, physical shops are still the dominant touch point for consumers. But um, I think um, those that adopted e-commerce, um, they quite soon experienced the potential of e-commerce, especially leveraging um, Meta, Google to target audiences. Um, when they figured that out, I think we saw the day of light of many marketplaces um, like Amazon still today, making Jeff Bezos the richest man on earth um, and bringing him into scope with his new wife, I guess, um, still dominant position for centralized um, platforms like uh, Meta and Google to target audiences. And I think, um, as of today, many, many customers or clients actually do ask us, can you help me push my D2C strategies? Because e-commerce is so important for my business. While this is all happening within retail, I think downstream, there's a lot of dynamics, which uh, got hyped this week as well. And I will touch on Apple later. But I think we're seeing the rise of um, ByDance with TikTok. We see the rise of Snapchat. Um, and all the beautiful filters. So virtual try-on, um, not, well, for Gen Z, Gen Alpha, virtual try-on um, is really part of their daily life. Um, skins, virtual goods, already in industry in itself of 60 billion. For those that love music, the virtual goods industry is double the size of the music industry, just to give you an idea. Um, we've seen many um, new digital ecosystems come to life, whether it's the Board Age Art Club or Artifact from Nike. Um, unfortunately, a lot of rug pulls, a lot of privacy and security issues still, but I'm sure as a community, we will be able to solve that. Um, and of course, new marketplaces seeing the day of life. Nike pushing the boundaries of Web3 with the dot swoosh marketplace. So. Uh, I think where that is happening downstream, I think the early adopters, the tech innovators will be able to build community and go beyond targeting audiences, um, which will be an important differentiator going forward for CPG and retail brands. If we continue, so what do we actually see? 
right? I think gaming um, currently is a pre-portal of what ultimately might become the metaverse, um, but let's not touch on the metaverse today. Um, let's focus on experience to buy. So what do we see? Um, the fashion rise in online gaming. If you want to start building community, you have to start somewhere. So why not start where Gen Z, Gen Alpha has a big presence, um, hence gaming, right? I think a lot of executives within CPG and retail tend to forget that they're not that target audience, right? We're speaking about Gen Z, Gen Alpha of truly digital born natives um, that were born almost with their phone in their hand. And question is, how long will we still use our phones? I will try and answer that today in the presentation. But whether it has been Ralph Lauren, Balenciaga, Ferrari, I think a lot of um, brands have leveraged the community of Fortnite, um, of Epic Games. We've seen new virtual concert during COVID, Travis Scott, Ariana Grande, Marshmallow, so um, pushing the boundaries of entertainment. And we see a lot of brand experiences, whether that's on Roblox or Decentraland, doesn't really matter. Um, I think the brands that have figured it out already are trying to build community and move away from targeting audiences. So what does uh, the revolution or evolution look like? Um, I'm gonna start with a video. Um, sharing this to, to just summarize what's already going on. So um, the video does not illustrate the future, right? The future is already here. Um, obviously, that will involve. But let's zoom in on what's happening to date, right? Uh, um, what I like about Web3 is literally every week, we've got new initiatives pushing the digital boundaries 
of what experiences can look like. So Starbucks is a good example of leaving their, well, not leaving their existing business model, but expanding their existing business model by leveraging Web3 technology um, to extend their loyalty program. So they're focused on membership, introducing digital collectibles. I think they have been a first mover where it comes to um, enabling digital collectibles to really build community with Gen Z. Lamborghinis really having a strategic roadmap in place, leveraging the most out of tokenized engagement. And I will come back on what Adidas and Nike are doing. Um, Nike, my example, um, one of the best examples today, um, with a good strategic decision to vertically integrate Web3 into their business, right? And you can argue whether Nike is a technology company or a sportswear manufacturer. I think um, the two are blended at the moment. But the dot swoosh marketplace is a good illustration because I think they have hundreds of millions of members um, but they're choosing to really build community with people that truly engage with the brand. So um, they had a few technical hiccups with the NFT marketplace. I'm sure that when an EPAM would have been involved, um, the hiccups wouldn't be there, but um, they were literally sold out um, in a matter of a few days. So leveraging the most out of Air Force One, but really allowing the community to co-create to have proof of authenticity, proof of ownership, and really leverage your digital identity and put it where your feet are. Um, what do we see happening as well? Like I mentioned, for me, gaming is a pre-portal of what ultimately might become the metaverse, right? Because where we're talking about social media on centralized platforms, I think gaming um, today is also still centralized, but they're opening up the ecosystem, evolving the ecosystem. So once this becomes truly decentralized, we will see the true potential. Um, but Nike, again, smart decision to partner with EA Sports. Um, first part of a, a decentralized ecosystem for gaming, which will allow the community to start co-creating, giving back to the community by being able to co-create, but also sell and use it in game, so a very smart move. I think only a few weeks ago, the European Commission actually greenlighted the acquisition of Activision Blizzard by Microsoft. So, where Microsoft acquired OpenAI for 10 billion, I think the, the acquisition of um, Activision Blizzard for almost 70 billion demonstrates the importance of big tech um, where it comes to Web3 and the metaverse. It's just about getting ready. Um, Epic Games playing two strategic um, levers. One, a share swap with Clo. Clo is a leading software for fashion design, um, 3D fashion design for that matter. So I think that's preparing for becoming relevant or um, growing their market share in fashion and luxury retail, where it's about 3D design, utilizing the Unreal Engine technology stack, um, but also forming strategic alliances. So together with Sony and Lego that invested 2 billion in preparing the next Roblox, but then on the platform of Epic Games. So I think we will see the Lego metaverse quite soon. Um, moving away from, from Nike, right? With their NFT marketplace, their partnership with EA Sports. I think it's very experience led already, but if I take Adidas as an example on what could the future look like for us as a community, for us as a consumer? I think where we see a lot of vintage marketplaces arise, I think you can, before something become vintage already, elevate the experience by trading um, fashion items, sports goods on one single platform, preferably decentralized, um, support good causes, actually reward people um, with tokens, um, and again, have the, the marketplace that comes with tokenization. So hence, proof of ownership and authentication. Um, design future sneakers, Nike is already doing that, but I think we will see much and much more so that you truly own unique pieces um, that you can trade, that you can wear, 
and obviously virtual shopping. I will touch on virtual shopping in a moment. Um, so what does the opportunity of Web3 um, actually bring? Um, it's building community through tokenized engagement. So with tokenized engagement, I think um, LVMH, they um, have been very active as a company. Tiffany and Co already tested the waters and they're, they're quite active with, within the NFT space. But uh, Louis Vuitton dropping 42,000 soulbound tokens that come with a good utilization, uh, again, is a good example of the potential in this space. Um, it's very US centric, but the 42,000 holders of the soulbound tokens surely will engage with the brand in um, a more active way than existing members. Obviously, what is relevant is choosing the right content for your community. I think the content of a VR experience will be different than an AR experience. Um, I think with Apple introducing their Vision Pro, as we've seen this week, um, we will see a lot of content creation um, for 3D, for AR. Um, so there we're just about to start of what the opportunity um, will be where it is about immersive experiences. Hence the title of my presentation, how do we evolve from click to buy to experience to buy? Because let it sink in, right? Um, we're addicted, driven by algorithms um, to our phone. We consume 2D content and um, we're addicted to the content we're currently consuming. But once it becomes truly immersive and 3D, I think um, we will see a lot of um, digital potential um, within the world. So touching on, on Apple, right? So what's the consumer facing use case that we anticipate? One, entertainment. So whether that's second screen experiences, um, enriching screen experiences, whether it's Formula One, whether it's football, whether it's product related, I think um, leveraging augmented reality in your living room um, will significantly grow. Also fitness and health, whether you have your digital avatar as a personal trainer, um, your avatar as a, as a running buddy, um, technology, is actually enabling this. Virtual commerce, um, I think we truly will evolve from click to buy to experience to buy. I mean, looking at Apple's Vision Pro, the first hardware product of Apple in nine years. Um, and I'm sure they've done their research. And with the Apple e ecosystem in play, we will see the rise of spatial commerce first, but virtual commerce next. Um, home design, interior decorating is already happening. I think IKEA was a first mover there, but we will see uh, much, much more there. Enterprises, um, I think there we already see combinations of Web3 technology with immersive experiences, whether it's professional support, leveraging augmented reality, running simulations, education and training, where it comes in, in healthcare, also productivity, leveraging the most out of digital twins and IoT. So truly being data driven before you make something real in real life um, and consumer research. I think the next phase for us as consumer um, will be the opportunity to grow AR-led e-commerce and spatial commerce. With the introduction of the Vision Pro, um, Reality Kit, AR Kit, XR code, um, we will be um, enabled by having spatial sound, um, experience sound. So if you're buying a new car, you want to experience the sound. If it's not electric, I think spatial sound will become an opportunity. 3D object scanning, space mapping, um, I think AR loads of digital reality on our physical environment and we will see a lot in that space. Same goes for environmental sensors. And of course, um, emotion tracking, hand gesture control, haptic interaction. So I think we will be paying with our, uh, through an iris scan, we'll interact with our hands by simply uh, pushing a tag in AR um, and check out. That's um, what I wanted to share with you today um, about how we evolve from click to buy to experience to buy. I hope it has been inspirational, not too forward thinking, and where you think this is 
the future. I think the future has already arrived and together leveraging the most out of Web3 technology, um, we're able to, to change the way we consume content and how we're uh, transacting. And that's through experience, my experiences. Um, I will open up for any questions you might have. Okay, so thank you so much, Ward, for your interesting presentation. And uh, both the content and the design are very fantastic, I would say. And uh, I would like the audience to leave any questions in the live chat. And before we start our Q&A session, I'd like to ask you a question from myself. So sure. isn't the hype already over? I think um, we escaped the uh, the AI hype cycle for a week, uh, and it's all in the reality in Apple uh, for the moment. I'm not sure for those of you of the community that actually um, buy shares, but but if you have would have bought shares of Apple and Unity for that matter this week, um, you will have done well for yourself. But um, no, I think we're just starting. Um, so where the metaverse as a hype actually, <clears throat> well, lost momentum for a bit, I think um, spatial computing, leveraging Web3 technology is just about to um, get skyrocketed. So no, definitely not. I see. Okay. So yeah, I would agree with you that uh, from year to year, our work is becoming more complicated and more interesting and <laughs> more exciting uh, at the same time. And uh, so... My question is, how do people, how do companies perceive this thing? I mean, uh, do they still uh, coming into the sphere by uh, by having no idea about what is it and uh, only knowing the word that metaverse is something like uh, something interesting and everybody around is doing it and we need to be there uh, since we don't want to stay behind? No, I, I will do um, one prediction uh, and perhaps a, a lot of people might disagree or, or already are in agreement but i think from a hardware perspective we're not there where we need to be um i think everything visible to human beings like our iphone like the apple vision pro everything visible from a hardware perspective once that becomes invisible i think there we will see um well a moment where we've arrived to a new reality, right? I think um, we're doing research with um, with government and where um, their research fertilities have one vision for the future, and that's to be hollow ported into any 3D world from wherever, whenever. I think um, that's how I see the future, but without um, big hardware um, to be worn. So uh, I don't know. Of people are aware of um, the biggest private investment that Bill Gates actually does. That's an investment into um, elect electric tattoos. So those electric tattoos come with a future vision where the electric tattoos will actually replace our iPhones. Um, and I think um, Apple, after the announcements of Vision Pro, actually announced an acquisition, an AR acquisition. If you look at that company that they acquired and announced on Tuesday, you will see that the goggles of that company already look like normal um, gla well, glasses that you can wear. And I think ultimately we will have implants or contact lenses um, that, that will really leverage the most out of AR, VR, and preferably everything decentralized. Okay, so yes, and uh, if we speak about this experience to buy model i mean uh how do you think how can businesses effectively communicate uh, the value of proposition of web3 and uh, this experience to buy model to their customers yeah I, I will give one example of where we're currently exploring new ways of entertainment right and um, one way of changing the paradigm of entertainment is by allowing people from the community um in virtual reality to whatever major sporting event. So if you imagine a football stadium where that fits 50 to 100,000 people, I think you will be able to actually bring people live to the, to the game through virtual reality um, 
as if they're truly there in the stadium, right? And what we're currently making real is that, okay, you're there in the stadium, but from your living room, you can buy the football boots that the players are wearing or the jerseys that the players are wearing through um, augmented reality and the haptic movement. You can um, take a screenshot um, of the live game, add a smart contract to it, trade it as an NFT and share it on social media. Again, that's not the future, that's already here. So uh, we will see a lot of uh, changing evolve, but that's truly about immersive experiences and making the most out of that. Um, going back to Apple, right? I think um, Bob Iger, CEO of Disney, was part of the keynote of Apple. And uh, I like Disney's vision of um, it's all about brand storytelling uh, and immersive experiences. So um, I think in a nearby future, we will be able to holoport ourselves into to a movie um, or to a cartoon for that matter. But let's start with uh, bringing Mickey Mouse into your living room um, through augmented reality. Okay, so yeah, sounds like, uh, like the evolution is still going on. And uh, if we speak about this, about the infrastructure part, I mean, how can businesses navigate uh, this uh, complex uh, process of integrating this Web3 technologies into their existing legacy kind of infrastructure and systems? Well, I think the answer to that, right, um, I would say is reach out to EPEM and I'm sure we will help uh, <laughs> whomever navigate the waters there where it comes about complex infrastructures. Yeah. Great. So, yeah, very unexpected affiliate <laughs> marketing. <laughs> so, yeah, for sure. Uh, absolutely agree with you. And uh, maybe there are any kind of uh, any kind of barriers or challenges that companies face when uh, trying to implement uh, Web3 tech. Well, uh, to my introduction, right, I think um, when e-commerce started up a lot of people actually said well that's not going to make a major impact on my business uh, i think the people that did not believe in e-commerce really saw significant losses um, of their business and i think with web3 ar vr um, if you're not going to well i think we're certainly in an innovation stage but i think um, where it's about web3 we're speaking about early adoption, not even about innovation anymore. But um, if you want to be there, it's now uh, the time to start adopting and get in. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and if we talk about this uh, effectiveness, I mean, how can such companies uh, try to measure somehow this effectiveness and maybe ROI of their experience to buy initiatives, maybe any other types of Web3 initiatives or maybe uh, any kind of consumer engagement in all that process. Yeah, so, so uh, I think um, going back or circling back to, to Nike and, and Louis Vuitton, right? I think Louis Vuitton, if you look at the price of the soulbound token, it's not necessarily about the price, it's more about the experience and the utility behind the NFT or digital collectible, as they like to refer to it. Um, if you look at Nike's marketplace, you could argue where they have hundreds of millions of members. Um, why do they bother to really build community with only 330,000 members at this stage? But that's just the beginning. Um, and then that will significantly grow. But um, I think the people participating with Nike initiatives or experiences for that matter, and also LVMH, um, they really have brand desirability. So it's a sum of brand, user and consumer experience um, in combination that's synonym for me for brand desirability. So it's experience-led, it's utility-driven, um, and it factors in um, everything Web3 stands for. So that's a a good thing to to progress and to evolve with okay yeah hopefully there will be more companies like nike and uh, any other good examples who could uh, who could sh uh, share their use cases about how it's going on and uh, speaking about industries i mean uh, are there any kind of 
industries uh, or products maybe that are better uh, suited for the experience to buy approach? I think uh, we see a lot of traction, obviously, within fashion, automotive, sports. Um, so I think for the moment, they are the obvious one where it is about the B2C use case, where it is about B2B. Um, I very much like what Dubai is doing with their future foundation. I think the future foundation, which is more B2B led, um, more about smart cities um, before they actually make something real in our real world they actually create it digitally um, and uh, and i think mercedes-benz has also chosen a strategy where they're leveraging the most out of digital twins and iot so before even putting a car into manufacturing they first create a digital version and the same goes for the future foundation in dubai um, before they make something real in real life they first um, do everything digitally, um, put on blockchain. And I think uh, that will, uh, well, that for me is what the future is all about and will be all about. Okay. And uh, so is it about, uh, so is it more about small startups or big companies at this stage? Um, uh, for me personally, um, I view Web3 as an opportunity for bigger brands with global consumer adoption to be less dependent on targeting audiences, to redu significantly reduce ad spend um, with Google, with Meta, and to really um, well, consider running their own platform decentralized and use that platform for building community where you give back to the community through Web3 technology, but you also give your community a say, whether it's about co-creation, whether it's about a vote in a DAO or whatever else. I think that's, for me, the true opportunity um, of Web3 for brands. Speaking about startups, um, I've seen a lot of disruptive startups in e-commerce. And again, it's the same within Web3. There are a lot of disruptive startups really seeing the opportunities. The beauty of those disruptive startups is they're disruptive, but also led by very young people that are so digitally savvy that um, together they will uh, for sure change the world. Okay, so let me now check the live chats once again. So yeah, we are streaming to several platforms. That's why we need to jump from one yeah. live chat to another. Yeah, just a second. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, while I'm trying to catch the questions from the live chats, maybe can you please share some of the key skills and capabilities that uh, consumer brands need to develop in order to thrive in the Web3 era? Yeah, of course. Well, well uh, I think uh, one advice is be truly data driven, right? So where you're leveraging Web3 technology, um, um, I think we're not hearing um, as much of as of a cookie-less era uh, these days as we used to do a few years ago. But Web3 also comes with the opportunity to know your customer better, to follow your customer where it where they go if the principle of interoperability is met. So I think with the help of, of AI, machine learning, um, effectively merging zero or first party data uh, with the consent of the consumer or the community member, um, you need to have the right skills in place um, with the consumer brands to, to understand everything, okay, which data and insights, which KPIs, which key metrics, um, can I influence, alter, um, or actually add to my dashboard? Mm -hmm. So um, on the data side, um, again, also AI embedded, there will be a new skill set required, right? And I will not go into AI because there will be many uh, presentations also on these community days about AI. So I will not touch on that, but certainly there you will see a change in skill sets and competencies. Um, where it's about click to buy and the evolution to experience to buy. Um, personally, I'm not a, a big fan of 2D content. I'm more a fan of 3D content, 
So um, where it's about content generation, right? Again, you can leverage generative AI for ID um, generation, but um, we will see a lot of change in content generation. So to be ready for AR e-commerce or spatial commerce, um, you have a decision to make. Will I develop it in-house or will I, for example, work with a company like EPAM um, and make AR e-commerce um, real or not? That also um, requires different skill sets and competencies. Okay, and uh, yeah, I know you. So you didn't want to talk about AI, but uh, anyway, we <laughs> have already touched this topic. And uh, just to make it clear uh, on some point, so how can AI technologies be integrated into the Web three to maybe enhance uh, the personalized experiences of consumers? Yeah, so so I will touch on a, a real life use cases on what we're currently making real, right? So uh, I think we're leveraging um, AI within our computer vision team for our clients to fuel visual search for um, embedding virtual try-ons into web and app. <clears throat> but we're also leveraging Unreal Engine uh, MetaHuman, where we are creating AI shopping assistants, AI um, influencers where we're stitching a conversational AI platform to the meta human or to the virtual human. And also we've created an accelerator uh, based on chat GPT for more personalized recommendations on e-commerce. So um, it has nothing to do with immersive experiences, but really driving hyper personalization, leveraging advanced technology. So, um, I think uh, that's a good use case of leveraging AI. So rather than uh, putting something into a chatbot uh, platform or in a dialogue, really have an interaction with a virtual human that is able to answer any question you might have or help you search the product that you love so much. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And uh, you also mentioned uh, this ownership uh, a couple of times and uh, so yeah, let's try to speak about that. And uh, can you please tell how can Web3 redefine the concept of ownership and uh, IP maybe not, not, not uh, overall, but in this experience to buy model? Yeah, so, so, so uh, I think two answers to your question, right? One B2C, uh, I think if you look at the, the, the yeah. intent of the Nike EA Sports partnership, I think that's opening up the gaming ecosystem to give back to the community. So to allow to you to co-create your own skin um, and have it as a, as a physical item in real life where you're the verified owner of that physical item where you've created it digitally and are using that in game yourself. So that, that, that's one model um, where you can monetize on your creativity. On the other hand, more B2B, B2B, and I think that's currently happening too little and should happen more. I think fashion companies are preaching circular fashion, yeah. and I think blockchain technology can really support being truly circular by putting all processes on blockchain, right? So if you're speaking about cradle to cradle, well, let's put it on blockchain, right? If you see the rise of vintage as a vintage marketplace, why not from the start put your fashion item on blockchain? Um, so that once it becomes vintage, it also comes with um, the proof of ownership um, and, and it's traceable. It has been traceable and verifiable. So I think also there um, it's beneficial to the community to be the verified owner of uh, whatever physical product. Okay, yeah, so we've got something like five minutes before we go to the next session and maybe, yeah, just to uh, make some concluding notes, uh, I'd like to ask you a question uh, from me. So what are the future possibilities and uh, advancements that can be expected uh, as Web3 continues to evolve in this uh, uh, speed and uh, shape the experience to buy paradigm? Yeah, I, I think um, the opportunity for a lot of brands is besides better storytelling is giving back to the community. Um, 
really leverage the human capital the community represents by giving them an active voice in whatever your business is. Um, so I think that's the, the true opportunity. Um, and wh whether you want to do that in an immersive way or not, uh, I think we will truly move to a, um, a future where we can be holoported in real time to whatever environment we want. But uh, when the principles of Web3 and interoperability are embedded, um, I think uh, we will have a, a fun journey ahead of us. Okay, so yeah, I'm very glad to hear such a, uh, such a positive predictions about the future. And uh, very, uh, it's very interesting to, uh, to, to, to see how to, to, to witness how it's going on. And so, yeah, I think that's it uh, from the questions part. Okay, then, yeah, Ward, thank you so much for your interesting presentation. From time to time, we will be <laughs> waiting some news and updates from you. Yeah, that's always, always that's very fun. interesting and very interactive, very uh, beautiful, at least. And uh, I would like to thank the audience for coming uh, to our today's uh, first session. And uh, stay tuned since we'll be uh, having our guest Radek Verzbitsky, who will be talking about blockchain and humanitarian missions together with uh, the next moderator, Alexandra Marginiano. You all know her already. And yeah, uh, now we will have some kind of three-minute transition. Please stay tuned. Thank you, everyone. See you in a couple of minutes. Cheers. <laughs>